It's Friday, December the 12th, 2014. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and this is episode number 62 of TEN, Transport Evolve News for the week beginning December the 8th, 2014. TEN is brought to you by freeconference.co.uk, bringing you the latest in transportation news with a future of low cost conference calls. Make conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of one local call. Visit www.freeconference.co.uk today. Six months ago, Nissan North America announced that owners of its Leaf electric car would finally be able to buy a brand new replacement lithium-ion battery pack for their car for just $5,499, including a $1,000 trade-in for their car's old battery pack. Now, Nissan Europe have announced its own version of the Leaf battery replacement program in which owners of any year of Nissan Leaf or Nissan EMV200 electric van can buy a replacement battery pack for their vehicle. Similar to the US program, owners will have to surrender their car's original battery pack in exchange for a new one, and will be paying €5,000 in Europe before taxes, or £4,100 sterling before taxes in the UK. While most people will still find their vehicle's battery packs are well within the extensive warranty period offered by Nissan, this scheme should at least quell any fears from would-be owners that they'll be left high, dry and poor with an expensive, unexpected battery replacement at some unknown point in the future. Its Seat 7 plugs in and is being marketed by its parent company as being the cleanest, smartest, safest full-size SUV in the world. And now we finally know a little more about Volvo's 2015 SPA-based full-size XC90 plug-in. Powered by a 2-litre turbocharged, supercharged four-cylinder engine at the front and a 65 kilowatt motor at the rear, the range-topping Volvo XC90 T8 is packed to the brim with advanced technologies, including two safety firsts for the industry runoff protection and intersection auto braking. But with its massive size and relatively small 9.2 kilowatt hour battery pack, the Volvo XC90 T8 isn't really designed as just an electric car. Instead, it can travel around 25 miles in all electric mode or go on to produce a combined economy of 59 mpge. While that's hardly good, it's worth remembering that that's the equivalent of a Toyota Prius from a full-size SUV. So far, so good. But when we come to the price, an eye-watering £59,550 sterling before incentives, it's going to be a tough sell against the highly anticipated all-electric seven-seat Tesla Model X, which, as Tesla promises us, will debut towards the end of next year. Good luck, Volvo. You're the manufacturer of one of the sexiest plug-in hybrids on the market today. Have an order book more than a year long, and the mainstream automotive world just loves you. So the one thing you don't want is an official recall for the very thing that you'd probably rather folks forget your car has, a gas tank. Yet this week, that's exactly where BMW found itself, with the news that the BMW i8 has a bit of a problem with certain model year 2014 BMW i8 plug-in hybrid sports cars. As the official recall notes, a fault in the manufacturing process has meant that some cars may have a tiny hole in their fuel tanks which, under certain circumstances, could leak. And as anyone who knows about gasoline and sparks can tell you, those two things don't go all that well together. Affected owners are having their cars fixed as I speak, so let's hope this is the last time a gasoline fuel leak rears its ugly head in the plug-in world. Toyota's 2015 Mirai fuel cell sedan will be as big as the Toyota Prius hybrid. That's the opinion of Rob Carter, Toyota USA's head of automotive operations, who said this week that the Japanese automaker's first production hydrogen fuel cell vehicle will change the face of the automotive industry forever. The Mirai, which has just started production in Japan and will go on sale in the US and Europe next summer, does indeed draw some similarities with the original Toyota Prius hybrid. Both cars are unconventional in their styling, both marketed as clean green vehicles, and both appear to have cost Toyota a fair bit of cash to develop. But while we'd love to see Carter proven right, we think there are some big differences between the Mirai and the Prius, differences which will ultimately cause the Mirai to have a very different life to the Prius. For a start, there's the whole fueling infrastructure thing, and then there's the matter of cost. Even at launch, the Mirai is far more expensive to build, we think, than the Prius ever was. As big as the Prius? Well, we're afraid we remain to be convinced. 
Audi's first mass-produced plug-in car, the 2014 Audi A3 Sportback e-tron plug-in hybrid, has been awarded a full five-star safety rating by the European crash test organization Euro NCAP. Based on the same drivetrain and chassis as Volkswagen's plug-in hybrid Golf GTE, the Audi A3 Sportback e-tron features a 1.4-litre TFSI gasoline engine mated to a six-speed S-tronic gearbox, as well as a powerful 75 kilowatt electric motor and 8.8 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery pack, and it will go on sale in Europe very shortly. In its official crash test ratings, the Audi A3 Sportback e-tron fared best in adult occupant crash tests, losing the most points for its pedestrian protection tests. We should note, however, that all in all, the A3 Sportback e-tron got a pretty impressive test sheet all round. In related news, however, the Kia Soul EV, the 2015 Kia Soul EV, Kia's first non-domestic electric car, has been awarded a four-star safety rating by Euro NCAP in the same round of testing as the A3 Sportback e-tron. But while the Kia Soul EV may appear to have fared worse on paper than its German counterpart, it turns out that it actually did better in both adult and child occupant tests than the sporty plug-in hybrid. In fact, it was only a lack of advanced safety features which dragged the Kia Soul EV's rating down. And when you look at things a little deeper, the things that, in which it did score highly on, you'll find that it even outrated the 2015 Tesla Model S for passenger and child safety. It just goes to show that sometimes it pays to check these ratings extra carefully because you might be surprised at what you'll find. Available with or without a range extending engine, the 2014 BMW i3 has proven itself to be one of the most popular new cars of 2014 with strong sales around the world. But as certain publications, including Consumer Reports in the US and the independent newspaper in the UK have discovered to their peril, running the BMW i3 Rex until its battery pack is completely empty can result in some reduced performance on steep, fast inclines. Well, this week, a sales handbook leaked online shows that BMW is more than aware of the situation, and it even shows its dealers how to explain to customers the range and performance expectations when the i3 Rex's battery pack is nearly empty. The problem is dealers aren't passing it on. Essentially, the page details the situations where the car will run on reduced power, and from our interpretation, it reiterates what we already knew. The i3 Rex's range extender isn't for long-distance trips. It really is designed to get you to the next charging station. So if you think otherwise and you're about to buy one, you better read up on that dealer handbook first, if you can get your hands on one. It might not seem like it, but Nissan's all-electric Leaf hatchback turned four this week, celebrating more than 150,000 sales and, as we reported last week, more than one billion travelled kilometres. And on the occasion of its fourth birthday, Nissan has unveiled some pretty compelling evidence from the UK, which says that more than half of owners in the UK say their LEAF outperforms traditional alternatives in every way. 93% of LEAF owners say they use their LEAF as their main family car. And from the money saved from not buying gasoline, Nissan says owners are better off, and they've treated themselves to everything from a 3D printer and family holidays, to installing solar panels to charge their car, or even a vintage synthesizer. It just goes to show, electric cars can help you go places you never before thought you could go. That's it for this week. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode of TEM, and in the meantime, Visit www.transportevolve.com for all the evolved news that's fit to print and subscribe to our channel and other shows on YouTube. And while we won't have a live show this weekend, you can join us for our special road trip edition after the fact at www.youtube.com forward slash transportevolved. And if you happen to be in the UK, head over to www.transportevolve.com to find out how you can take part in our special road trip edition. And don't forget to visit our show sponsors at www.freeconference.co.uk. It doesn't matter if you're making work conference calls to New York or family calls to New Zealand. Free Conference lets you make and join telephone conference calls anywhere in the world for just the cost of a local call. To sign up and get calling today, visit www freeconference.co.uk to set up your first free call. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a great weekend and until next time, stay juiced up.